Good morning again. We thank you for coming to uh, another service here at the Abyssinia Baptist Church in Silver Spring, Maryland. Um, we all know about some of the things that have been taking place in this world today. We've got the coronavirus situation and we have the protesting all over the world for Black Lives Matter movement. But in God's sight, all life is precious. Black, white, rich, and poor. I just want to give a message today. Out of the book of 1 Peter chapter 4, I start at verse 12. I want to title this message, Don't Think It's Strange. Because it's not strange. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. And as we go through this life, you're going to find out it's not strange. These things that have been taking place in the world have been going on since the beginning of time. There's nothing new. There's nothing different. It may be a certain period of time that may go by before something takes place. But it's all the same. And we got to know, based upon the word of God, how to handle every situation that comes along. Your Bible is your instruction manual. Just like when you buy a brand new car, they give you a manual about your vehicle. If you see these lights come on or anything takes place, you can go to the owner's manual and find out what the problem is. So that's what the Bible is. The Bible is the Word of God to give you instruction on how to deal with situations that take place in this world, in your life. To give you hope. To encourage you. To strengthen your faith in Jesus Christ. That's what the Word of God is for. So as I get into this message here, in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, so at verse 12, don't think it's strange because it's not strange. We just need to hang on to Jesus Christ. Anchor our hope and faith in Him. Get a hold of His Word. Live that Word. And be a living testimony to the body of Christ in this world. Starting at verse 12. Beloved, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you. Hold on right there. Beloved, dear friend, dear companion, my buddy, my sister, my brother and sisters in Christ. Beloved, showing compassion for others. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials. Hold on right there, right there, right there. Fiery, what does that mean? Well, fiery means to turn up the heat. To make hot. To make things uncomfortable or unbearable. Fiery trials. Because the devil's going to try you. The devil's going to test you on will you really stand in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Fiery trials. What were this trials? Trials are tests and tribulations. He's going to turn up the heat in your life. He's going to turn up the heat on your marriage. He's going to turn up the heat concerning your children. He's going to turn up the heat concerning your finances. He's going to turn up the heat on your job with your friends. He's going to turn up the heat in every area of life to find out what you really made of. He's going to try you and he's going to test you to see where you really stand in all this. Beloved, think in that strange concern the fiery trials, which is the trial, you, uh-oh, you, as an individual. The tests and trials are coming to test you as an individual. Listen to the book. As though some strange thing happened unto you. This is not strange. This is not new. I remember when I first got saved. My mother told me that, listen, just because you accepted Jesus Christ 
as your Lord and Savior, you were baptized. Don't think every day is going to be a bit of roses. Life is going to get very hard for you because now you got a target on your back because you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. You turned your back on this world and accepted Christ, and now you want to be a disciple of Christ, and you want to follow Christ. So now the world is going to try you concerning your relationship with Jesus. But one thing I can say, one thing I can say, it's better to have God on your side than I have God on your side at all. Amen, somebody. Verse 13. But rejoice. What? In the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of all that's going on, people out of work, people ain't got no money, people ain't got no jobs, some folks gonna have a place to live, the pandemic is going on, people getting sick, people are riding, the protesting that's taking place all over the world. He said, but rejoice. And as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. The world can't give you no joy. Only God can give you joy through the power of the Holy Spirit. If ye be, verse 14, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, if you be reproached, you are going to face persecution in this world. Nobody that accepts Christ is not going to go through a hard time. You will face tests, trials, and tribulation because you made a decision to follow Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ already talked about it in the book of Matthew chapter 5 verse 10 through 12. And this is what he says. Blessed are they which, pers which are persecuted for righteousness. Say, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye. Because you accepted Christ, you blessed. When men shall revile you, and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. When you make that decision to accept Christ, people will come against you. This is what he says. Rejoice in being seen and glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. The world is going to come at you. Jesus Christ told us already. He said they hated me before they hated you. And because now that you accepted me as Lord and Savior, the world is going to hate you just like it hated me. My mom used to tell me Jesus Christ ain't did nothing to nobody. All he went around doing was blessing people and healing people and saving people and delivering people. And look what they did to him. So she said to me, what do you think they're going to do to you? If they did that to him, and he's the son of God. So we must anchor our hope and faith in him and rejoice in him because he paid the price for us on Calvary. In the Old Testament, they looked towards the cross. They looked for hope. They looked for deliverance. They looked for salvation. They looked for blessing. But for us on the other side of the cross and the Jesus died on the cross on Calvary and got up on the third day with all power and authority and I look back at the cross and say thank you for what you've done for me. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for everything that you have done for me because he did it all. All I did was accept the invitation that was given to me. Even all you can do in this world is accept Christ or reject Christ. That's all you can do. But persecution will come your way. And the more persecution comes your way, the more you anchor your faith in Jesus. And when you anchor your faith more in Jesus, when persecution and trials and tests come, and they get hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter, now the Holy Spirit will kick in and give you a joy and give you a peace that surpasses all understanding in this world. And the world is going to sit back and look at you and try to figure out what is wrong with you. Why ain't you freaking out with everybody else? Because I got God on the other side of me. I got the Holy Spirit living on the other side of my heart. 
leading me and guiding me into all truth. I don't have to get upset because I know I got a Savior. That if I call on Him and pray to Him, that He'll hear my cry, He'll deliver me from every situation. And if He doesn't deliver me from the situation, He'll give me His peace in the midst of a storm. Oh, that's the beauty of it. When the trials come and the storms come of life, and the boat of life is all over the place, up and down and shaking around and shifting you, you can anchor your faith, you can anchor your joy, you can anchor your hope in Jesus Christ. And Jesus will give you the peace that you need in the midst of a storm. God is good. Thank you, Lord, for being good. Finish up on verse 14. For you be reproached for the name of Christ. Listen, happy are you for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Hold on, what does that mean? The day you accepted Jesus Christ the Lord to save you and you were baptized in his name. Oh, let me break it down like that. In the book of Matthew chapter 3, when Jesus came to the Jordan, you're to be baptized by John. And, and, G, and John said, I'm not worthy to baptize you. I'm not even worthy to carry you, tie your shoelaces. And Jesus Christ said, suffer to be so, John. So all righteousness must be fulfilled. And John baptized Jesus. And the Bible said that Jesus came straightway out of the water. And then the Holy Spirit landed on him because the heavens were open and God said this is my son who I am well pleased because you accept the Christ the spirit of God the Shekinah glory of God the Holy Spirit of God the goodness of God rests upon you and now it rests upon you and now it lives in you and the Holy Spirit is our is our comforter and our God who leads in the all truth. Man, God is good. I don't know about nobody else. God is good. Listen to the book. For restless, listen, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is evil. On their part, listen, on their part, the world's part, on their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. Lord, have mercy. Even when trouble comes, I can glorify my God. Even when trials and tribulation come, I can thank my God. I can get up in the morning and say, thank you, Father, for watching over me. Thank you, Father, for another blessed day. Thank you, Father, for my family. Thank you for my children and grandchildren. Thank you, Father, for giving me good health from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Thank you, Father, for saving my soul. Thank you, Father, that you are my God. Thank you, Father, for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who died on the cross at Calvary and paid my sin debt for. Thank you for the precious Holy Spirit. Now all I got to do is just thank God and glorify God in the name of Jesus Christ for all his goodness and all his mercy. In my see, and that's what the world can't understand. He's evil spoken of them. But on your part, he's glorified. Even when hard times hit, and there's a lot of hard times going to hit us even more. There's folks out of work. And some folks is out of work because of the corona pandemic. Now they, they ain't never going to get a job back again. Because now some people have cut back everything. All them businesses are already closed. Now they look for work. But you know what? God is a sustainer. For them. That put their hope and trust in him. Lord have mercy. God is good because I know I've been there. I've done that before. And God has sustained me and kept me and blessed me in hard times. That's why I can give a testimony of the goodness of God. Because he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said it in his word. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever Lord. Forevermore. So if I'm going to brag and if I'm going to boast about anything, I'm going to brag and boast about my God. Come on, talk back to a brother in here. Lord, have mercy. Listen, verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, mm -hmm, or a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's affairs. Lord, have mercy. And that's what we got problems with right now. People are always in somebody else's business. Mm. You know some of them. 
I ain't gotta mention no names. All you do just look at your fingertips right there. So, well, I know about five of them right there. Verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this behalf. If any man or any person suffer as a Christian, don't be ashamed. Just because hard times hit you, don't be ashamed. Look towards God. Call on the master of all creation. Call on your father, and he'll answer you. And he'll bless you. And he'll keep you. And he'll provide for you. He will heal your body when you need it. Lord, he'll bless your family. God is good. And he's always been good. It's just that we need to start reading the book and start taking our time to pray to him and spend some time with him to find out about his goodness. It's the goodness of God that leads mankind into repentance. God has always been good. God ain't never been bad. All you have to do is look over your life sometime and look at all the things that God has got you out of trouble with. Look at the things that, that could have happened to you and God was with you. Man, I gotta read, let me read that one more time. Verse 16. Mm -mm -mm. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this behalf. I'm going to praise my God. Verse 17, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Uh -oh. All the stuff that's taking place, all the stuff with the coronavirus, all these pandemics, God is shaking up the earth. He's shaking up businesses. He's shaking up churches. He's shaking up marriages. Come on. He's shaking up households. He's shaking up a whole bunch of stuff. Why? Because judging on start in God's own house with his own people. And God has the right to judge his own people. Here's my thing. My mom used to, used to tell me, live right and do right. You belong to God. Live right and do right to the best of your ability. See, God is going to start shaking up things. And God is going to start shaking up his own people. If things are out of line, God is going to get things back in line. You best believe it. And I don't care where it is across this whole world. God is shaking up a whole bunch of stuff and he's revealing a whole bunch of stuff and he has to do some sifting sometime to get things straight. And maybe we need to take this time to get close to God. People are sitting at home watching TV, watching YouTube and Netflix and Hulu and everything else. We need to start taking up our time to start picking up God's word and start reading God's word and putting it in our heart and putting it in our mind and changing our lives. God is shaking up some things. And he's going to find out when he finishes sifting where we all truly stand. Amen, somebody. So take the time to draw close to God while we have that time. Because life is short. I don't want nobody to lose their life without Christ. So get a hold of God while you got the time to do so. Most people have been sitting around for the last two or three months just watching TV. Ain't never picked up the Bible yet. Pick it up. Read it. Get a hold of God. Let God work in your life. Let the Holy Spirit change some things in you. To get yourself right with God. Amen. Still in verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begins at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God. There's some in this world that still haven't turned their life over to Jesus Christ. And I pray, I pray that the time that God has given you before the sand and the hourglass of your life run out, that you call on God, that you repent of your sins, and that you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. 
and find a church to go to that's going to baptize you in the name of Jesus. Because sure enough, you need them. And we all need them. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm glad that I made my choice when God gave me the opportunity to make that choice. All we got to do is accept or reject. Jesus Christ already paid the price. All you can do is say, Father, I accept your Son as Lord and Savior of my life. Forgive me of my sins. Or I reject your Son. That's it. That's all there is to it. Verse 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where should the ungodly and the sinners appear? Oh, Lord, have mercy. The point on a man wants to die. And then the judgment. So when we stand before God, how do we stand? If you can hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well, he's going to say, I never knew you. God has blessed us with one, two of the greatest gifts there is. He blessed us with his son. And he blessed us with the gift of life. Some folks live 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years. And what you going to tell God when you stand before him? On judgment day. God bless you with 90 years of life. You mean to tell me that you couldn't take a few moments out to accept my son out of 90 years of life? I never knew you. I bless you to get the time. And you still never repented. You still never accepted my son. You still never went to got baptized in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You wasted the time that I've given you. Lord, I don't care how much money you make, how many businesses you own, how many cars you drive, how many houses that you have. If you don't have Jesus, you ain't got nothing. All that other stuff is temporal to fade away. All, you know, if you ain't got Christ, you in trouble. So get him while you have an opportunity. Verse 19. Therefore let them that suffer according to the will of God. Commit and keeping of their souls to him and well doing as a as unto a faithful creator. I thank God for the opportunity to bring this message to you. Don't think it's strange when you're going through rough times. Don't think it's strange. The test trials and tribulations come in your life, in your marriage, in your finances, on your job with your health, the situations of the world. I don't think it's strange. But be glad and rejoice that the Spirit of God rests upon you. That the time that God gave you, you accepted His Son. And when you accept His Son, the Bible said the heavens are open. And the Spirit of God descended like a dove and landed on Jesus Christ. He said, this is my son in God's spoke. This is my son. Who I am well pleased. And he'll say the same thing about you. This is my son. Well, this is my daughter who I am well pleased. And God makes an announcement throughout the whole world concerning you. Everything in creation knows that you are a child of God. You may not see it. You may not understand it. You may not even believe it. But because you accepted Christ, the Shekinah glory of God rests upon you. And don't think it's strange when family members, friends, co-workers, homeboys, sister girls, when they have nothing to do with you no more, they don't want to talk to you no more. And as you live your life with Christ, you'll see each and every day go by you. I don't know about nobody else, but they got sweeter and sweeter for me. Because he is a deliverer. He is a helper. And I'm glad I made the right decision. I'm thankful for Jesus Christ. And I tell him that every day. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you've done for me across that Calvary. You gave me an opportunity and I accepted the opportunity that you presented before me. Yes, I had some ups and downs like everybody else. 
But now I've learned to have the peace of God as a pass of all understanding to live in my heart. Even though rough times hit, I've seen for myself that God is a provider, He is a healer, He is a deliverer, He is a savior, He's a blesser. Even in the pandemic times, even in the lean times, I've got many testimonies about the goodness of God. When everything was going crazy all around me, and I said, one thing is strange, but the fiery trials is to try you and to test you. I put my hope in Jesus. I focus my attention on Jesus. I put my faith and my hope in what he said in this word. I read his word every day. Two or three times a day, if need be. Meditated on the word. Prayed on the word. Asked God to give me his Holy Ghost revelation of his word. And God sustain me and bless me during pandemic and hard times of my life. I stand here today just to be a testimony, to be a witness to the goodness of God. God is wonderful. God is good. Give God a try. As Pastor Jackson always say, give God a try. Give a try for six months and see what happens. You waste six months half the time just sitting around. Give Jesus a try for six months. Matter of fact, give him a try for a day and see what he'll do for you. I know. I've lived it. i experienced it. And I don't want nothing else. Amen. For those that would like to send in any prayer requests, um, you can reach us on our website at abcgic.org. Let me repeat it again. Our website is abcgic.org. You can go on our website if you want a prayer request. Um, you can click on the link and we'll pray for you you, your family, whatever it is that you need God to do in your life. We have categories there that you can check off and we'll pray for you. We thank God for you. And we thank God for the opportunity to speak to you one more time. God is good. And if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your life, today is the day to do so. All you got to do is believe in your heart. Confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your life. Repent of your sins. And God said, I'll save you. And believe that he was risen on the third day. And that he died on the cross for your sins. God said, thou shalt be saved. God bless you. Heaven smile on you. Keep the faith. Keep the hope. Trust in God. Believe in his son. Believe in his word. And be empowered by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.